Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be talking about the Fujifilm X-T5, which um, I've had now probably, well since the day of release, I went down to command the cameras with my Fujifilm X-T3 and X-Pro2, which I still to this day can't believe, and part exchange those. But thank you to command the cameras for giving me a good deal as always on part exchange. So uh, this isn't a sponsored video by any means, but they always do look after me with part exchanges. And I know that somebody told me that that camera sold less than a week. <laughs> my X-Pro2 is, is gone, I'm, I'm devastated. I wish I could buy it back actually. But yes, we have the Fujifilm X-T5 here and I've been using it since the day it came out. I went straight to a job, picked this up from Command the Cameras, went straight to a job and I've been using it every day for uh, commercial events, a few portraits, I even photographed Santa Claus in the other day. So, um, and I've done a bit of uh, video hybrid shooting as well. So yeah, it's been used every single day since then. And uh, yeah, what I wanted to do in this video though is talk to you about, uh, I'm not gonna give you the specs because if you're watching this video, you already know that this is an amazing camera. You know what the specs are, it's, it's phenomenal. But what I wanted to do is talk to you about things that other people aren't mentioning and sometimes um, when I spoke to other people about when they've asked me what my feelings are on the camera a lot of people have been put off by certain things and I just want to address those issues as well so yeah that's what we're going to discuss in this video so for me this camera was a upgrade from my X-T3 not so much the X-T4 which I'm filming on now um, but definitely an upgrade from the X-T3 I've really really been looking forward to getting the, uh, the normal screen back. I, I'm just not a fan of flip screens. So the first thing I'm gonna say is I'm absolutely delirious that we've actually gone back to, to the X-T3 screen. And a few people have said that theirs have been loose. Their screen and mine's actually rock solid. So really, really happy. But it wasn't until it caught the bottom of the, <laughs> the arc plate. Actually, the L bracket is something I wanted to mention first. The, um, the grip for me is too small. Okay, the camera, the, the camera is too small. I wish, I, I personally don't understand why cameras have to be so small. I use this professionally, I use it all day. I'm holding it like this all day. I would love it to have been bigger. Now on that, obviously you can get grips. Um, they don't do a booster grip, which we know about because there's no contacts. We can't put a battery grip on the bottom of it. But the, there is a Fuji MTG, I think it's, um, metal hand grip, I think, M MHG, MHG, metal hand grip uh, for the X-T3, um, X-T5. I still think that's too small, but I know uh, small rig and other companies are bringing out thicker ones. So, um, but the <laughs> Fuji ones are under 30 quid. <laughs> so yeah, 130 quid for, for about half a centimeter extra, but it is doable and it's better than nothing. So yeah, for me, the grip is too small. <laughs> Going from 26 megapixel on the X-T4, 20 to 40 on this was a bit of a worry for a lot of people, a bit of a worry for me for my events because I shoot a lot at high, so 6400. I didn't want that to be a compromise at all. Now, I'm gonna do a separate video on that. I was gonna try and cram it into this video, but I'm gonna do a separate video to see, uh, because I'm, I have shot at 6400 on it. I have to say, I do think there is a slight, I, I do think there is a slight compromise, but I haven't done anything extensive yet. So I might eat my words on that one, but it, it, a lot of it's gonna depend on the lens as well, because we'll get to that in a minute. But because of the sensor, I think there's a slight can of worms being opened. Um, now. My issue was, if I'm doing weddings and events with a camera like this with 40 megapixel, we're gonna have a look at the, some raw files in a minute. I've actually taken some photographs where you can download the raws and uh, and jump over to Dropbox or whatever it is, Google, whatever, uh, and download the raw files and have a look at pi pixel peep. I've taken some on the X-T4, which is 26 megapixel, and taken some on the X-T5, same lens using this 33 mil 1.4 high-res lens, so you can compare and see what the difference is. But for me, it's it's about the raw file size. If you're if you're shooting weddings events like that, that would be something to consider. If you're to taking two or three thousand photographs at a, a wedding or event, going back and then transferring massive files over um, could be an issue. So we're going to look at that in a second as well. What I will say though is the quick button. If you on, on Fuji normally, um, if you would press the press and hold delete for a couple of seconds, then press that. The back button it would give you a quick format option that's not there anymore and that's really annoying I, I don't understand why that's not there hopefully Fuji will bring this back in a firmware update because to, to format a card day quickly a shortcut was just to press and hold the trash button the bin button and then hold that after three press that after three seconds it doesn't work um, so yeah formatting the card I've had to put in my my memory which is a bit of a pain in the ass because all the other cameras do it <laughs> on this one anyway small thing but yeah it's a niggling thing Let's have a look at who this camera's for then. So if you're a portrait photographer or uh, architectural landscape, uh, events photographer, well, events photographer, maybe not so much because you don't want 40 megapixels for that, but some, well, some events you do. Um, I think I think it's a phenomenal camera. The, the improvements make it absolutely solid for commercial photography. I, I think it's just absolutely incredible. Now for landscape photography, one of the reasons I bought this camera because I was looking forward to sort of not having, not feeling so obliged to, 
to use my Nikon Z7 so much because I really love the resolution of the Z7 and being able to print big. I don't, I try and avoid cropping with my landscapes. At absolute, you know, I, I just want so many. I want a massive catalog of big images. I don't want to be able to crop 40 megapixel. I want them to stay that big. So when this was announced, I thought, fantastic, this is going to be um, Fuji colors for my landscapes again. Really, really miss my, my Fuji colors for landscapes. Obviously, I wanted the GFX, but couldn't afford one. Um, and not that thrilled on the lens ecosystem either. But I I thought this would be amazing. Now, the 1024 doesn't seem to resolve the, the pixel sharpness, okay? The actual sensor itself is fantastic in Lightroom. So with the other with the other lenses, like the 33, the 1655, um, the 56, the new 56, um, and, and 5140, those lenses seem fine. Even the 18 to 55, actually, the 18 to 55 RAW seem fine in Lightroom. But the 10 to 24, this is the Mark 1, but optically, obviously the Mark 1 and Mark 2 haven't changed, but the 1024 doesn't seem to render the sharpness at all. So it's a bit of a concern. So obviously you've got the 8 to 16 to consider if you, if the front bulbous element doesn't bother you. Obviously you'd need like 150 <laughs> um, mil filters if you're doing landscape photography or something like that, or even a polarizer. So for commercial, for interiors, for architecture, the this camera is causing a bit of a problem. Now I'm looking at the Viltrox lens. I don't have the Viltrox 13 mil, but I know from, from a few good sources who own the lens that it's very, very good and will resolve the detail. So that could be, if you're thinking about buying this camera and you're potentially put off by the wide angle uh, problem, that could be a, um, obviously it's a prime, but that could be a solution for you. So that's something I'm looking for, especially for my clients, interior kitchens, that sort of thing. Okay, let's dive in and have a look at some of the raw files. A lot of people have been put off buying this camera because they think that the 40 megapixel file size is absolutely nuts, which I get. Um, but have a look at this. Now we've got some, all these, all these raw files, as I said, you can download. There'll be a link in the description. Now we've got the X-T4 uh, uncompressed at 57 meg. Now it's a 20, 26 megapixel file, um, but an uncompressed is, tw is 57 meg. The lossless compressed, which is what I shoot with 100% of the time, I just don't see any difference in the compression. It's absolutely fantastic. It's 28 meg. So for the same size, it's exactly the same file. This is just a, a flower we shot on the desk here. We had some flowers in there. <laughs> some flowers in the office for a change the other day. So um, you can have a look at see what the difference is there. But then the compressed, I don't know why you'd use this, is two megs smaller again, so 26.4. Now that's interesting because you're only saving you're only saving two meg there, but that's like that's nearly half. Okay. Now if you look at the XT5 one, this is where it gets interesting. Uncompressed, 85 meg. Now these were taken at 125 125 ISO. Um, so obviously, when you lift ISO, the file sizes do get bigger. So you could be talking um, you could add five or so meg on top of that for higher ISO files. It might even be 10 meg. But uncompressed is 85. Lossless compressed is 42 and compressed is 27. So there's a massive difference between the compressed and the lossless compressed. Okay, so I haven't done any testing on the on the difference between the compressed and the lossless compressed at all. Um, what I, but I'd be interested to see is whether or not for a wedding, 27 megapixel file sounds exactly the same as Max D4. So if there's no you know, I tend to I try and get it right in camera, so I'm not one of these people that does a lot of post-processing. But I'm looking at these files now thinking, lossless compressed is only 10 meg more. So it's not massive difference, okay? So 10 meg is 10 meg, I suppose it does add up. So I would have to be vigilant there. But if I could get away with shooting the compressed files at 27, uh, 28 meg, say 30, that's absolutely fine. And, and, and the croppability, if I needed to, is there. And then obviously shooting with the new primes, I've got that extra sharpness as well. So I'd take that. I'd 100% be happy having a slightly bigger file that's croppable and sharper. But no, that's, that's for me, that's, that's an eye opener. And I think a lot of people are gonna be put off buying the camera because of the file sizes. But do some research, you can download these files, rip the crap out of them let me know in the comments if you've done if you found any um let me know particularly if you found any difference between these two lossless and compressed because if you could if i could get away with shooting i wouldn't shoot landscape or commercial or anything like that i'd probably just leave it at lossless but definitely for a wedding or something like that i'd love to be able to try that out and see if i uh, if i get away with the results so that'd be really interesting and that renders every argument about the xt5 red um higher res uh, completely out of the water in my opinion so yeah that's a good find Mega shame about the uh, 10 to 24. It's one of my favorite Fuji lenses. 
Let me know if you've, um, at one point when I looked at the files, I actually thought I'd left the IBIS on, on the side. And I always use a two second timer. So yeah, let me know. And I'm using a flipping, <laughs> I hate these, I hate these. So I can't wait to get an L bracket. Let's talk about ergonomics. Um, obviously I'm delighted with the screen, flip screen, absolutely perfect. I've done some street photography with this. I've done landscape photography, I've done commercial events. It's just the way I like to shoot. I literally hate flip screens for photography. I'm filming on a flip screen now so I can see the, what the camera's doing and everything. But for photography, absolutely. And I've done some video with this as well. I uh, filmed a concert with it, left it running at the front and um, absolutely mint. So yeah, really, really cool. Um, I really like it. Incidentally, you've got these doors on the side, which as I'm doing now, I always plug in a, a USB-C uh, power bank so when I'm filming I've got actually the cameras running off a power bank if you get a PD power bank they're not expensive and plug it in there um, you can um, you can charge these and like if I'm filming a concert I don't have to worry about trying to change the battery every half an hour or whatever now I will say I will say I am one of these people that's gutted about the EVF on it I just think because the now I, this is an, a stills camera now for, for, for stills I use the EVF I try and avoid using the screen as much as possible. Sometimes, um, sometimes I, you know, it's just quick and easy to use the screen. But for me, I'm an I'm, I'm an EVF shooter. That especially if I'm shooting an event or something like that, and because the screen's gonna light up the auditorium. Okay, I film a lot of piano concerts and that sort of thing, or shoot a lot of piano piano concerts. So I can't really use the screen on that occasion. So I have to use the EVF. I'm devastated that they've not given us the XH2 EVF. I really am. And then the difference between this and the XH2 is 200 quid. Not comparing it to XH2S, but the XH2 is £200. Now, if, if I had said there's an XT5 Plus or something like that, for £200, I would 100% pay 200 quid to have a better EVF on this thing. Absolutely. No two ways about it. I just don't think it's it's up to standard that it should be. I think a lot, it, it, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. It's a lot of money for f considering what you get. I think the, X <laughs> the, XH2, the XH2 is just a better camera value for money. Right, if you like the ergonomics, if you like the aesthetics, if you like the flip screen, it's just a better camera. Now for me, this this exposure triangle here is exactly, is absolutely the way I like to shoot. The screen is absolutely the way I, I want to shoot. And I do like the, the slightly improved grip. So for me, this is the camera. I, I'm, I'm really happy with it. I just desperately wish um, the EVF was better. And that's pretty much my, my biggest, my biggest thing on, on this thing. Um, everything else I'm absolutely in love with. Uh, the the eye autofocus has always been a massive uh, bugbear on Fuji's. It's just crap. <laughs> I don't care who's watching. I don't care who's watching. If anybody says I'm, I don't know how to use my cameras, sod off, I've been using them professionally for nine years. Eye autofocus on Fuji is just garbage. Now they've massively, and that doesn't matter. I don't care what lens you're using. Right? I've, I've owned them all bar two. There's only two lenses I've never owned. and. The, maybe three now with the new ones, um, and I, but the new one, the XT5, is massively improved. So I can actually use eye autofocus. Right, it's it's game changing. It's really really good. Um, it's it still misses. I, I would say it's on the par with my Nikon Z7 Mark One. <laughs> right, I'm being honest. I'm not, I'm not one of these YouTubers that bullshit you. It's 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 good. Right, my the Z7 Mark One is 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 good. I think a lot of people say that the Z7 Mark One isn't very good for eye autofocus. I autofocus, but I think it is, right? I think it's good. Um, in the right light, I think it's fine. Now, is it Sony or Canon level? Absolutely flipping not. But yes, it is a massive improvement over other Fujis. So yeah, if you if I auto for I, oh, I can't speak today. If I autofocus is important to you, then you're going to love the upgrade on it. And just generally, focus acquisition is much much faster, much more reliable. It feels like a more professional camera. You're not using it thinking. Well, okay, you are, but you're not using it so often thinking, have I missed focus or something like that. Um, it does still miss focus, but nothing like as bad as X-T4. I'm gonna, I'm not, that's pretty much all the hate I'm going to do on Fuji. Um, I do I do lo love the camera. Um, th th another thing I was going to say is that the, the, the dual card slots, oh, we'll go back to, we'll go to positives. <laughs> right? We'll go to positives. Um, the dual, dual SD cards, I'm so, so thrilled it's dual SD. I could not stand the CF Express or Flash, whatever it is. I couldn't stand it. I've got about 30 SD cards, all of my my case over there. I can't replace them and I flipping need them. <laughs> I need to be able to swap them out quick and just go on to the next job or whatever it is. I try not to format cards for at least like a week or so so that I've got a backup 
until I've double backed up my, my R drives or something like that. So yes, it's um, it's really, really good that we've got that. I'm really, really pleased with that. Um, the other thing is on the X-H2, you don't have the press dial. The, that, that button there, that dial there on the X-H2 isn't pressable. It is on this and I couldn't live without it. Um, Bluetooth friggin' works. <laughs> I did a photo shoot for me and the family the other day for Christmas presents, and I thought for shits and giggles I'll try Bluetooth, and it flipping works. I can't believe it. I actually pressed that. I say it works. It works 90% of the time. I pressed it. You press and hold it. It goes into this thing at the top, and then you you press Bluetooth there, and it starts pairing your phone. But I'm on an iPhone 13, and it found it, and then I used the iPhone 13 as a remote, and it worked every time apart from one. Right. There was one occasion when it didn't work, but I turned the camera off and on, and then it worked again. So my other Fuji cameras, the Bluetooth is just absolutely blooming garbage. It never works. I can't get it to work on any of my Fuji cameras. In fact, let me know if you can. I can't get it to work on any freaking Fuji camera. So this, the Bluetooth, it made me laugh when they've got Bluetooth written there. I thought, are you taking a piss? Because <laughs> that ain't going to work. But it actually does. So well done, Fuji, for getting that. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Um, Everything else has been covered by the YouTubers, so I won't mention much, but the only thing I would say is the joystick on the X-H2 is up there, and I think I much prefer that. It's the same place as my Nikon Z7, so I much prefer the joystick being up there like it is on the X-H2, but that's a small thing. I did notice that when it was in portrait mode doing street photography, and I held it like that, it my thumb was touching the, the top screen. Yeah, it's done it there, see? It's, as your thumb moves that, it touches the top screen, and then your focal point moves to the top. So you have to, just have to be careful. Oh, the turn touch screen off, because when I, when I was using that, and then it just touched the top screen by mistake, it was just uh, it was just moving out. It's a bit close to the screen. But I don't actually notice it doing that on XT3, weirdly enough, but anyway. Yeah, I think that is it. I think that is it, because you've seen all the other videos that have gone through all the specs. I absolutely love it. Um, a, huge a huge improvement over for Fuji. I'm really, really thrilled with it, so yes. Eight and a half out of ten for me. It's just the EVF really that really has wound me up. I just uh, and and the grip. I just find the camera a bit too small. But that's me. I've got big hands. If you haven't got big hands, you've got small hands. You might you might be in love with it. So, yeah, I'm absolutely absolutely love with the camera. So, it definitely feels like a massive upgrade anyway. And definitely you definitely need to pick up one or two of these primes. So anyway, leave it there. That's probably a long enough video as it is. Thank you for watching, guys. And hopefully I'll have another street photography video coming out before Christmas. So uh, yeah, see you soon. Thanks again.